Welcome to Pocket Chat number nine. Uh, I'm Marianne Mason. I'm co-chair of the joint Chicago Bar Association, Chicago Bar Foundation Task Force on the Sustainable Practice of Law and Innovation. I'm here today with Bob Glaves. Bob, as many of you know, uh, is the longtime executive director of the Chicago Bar Foundation, uh, having served in that capacity since 1999. Correct. Good. Am I correct? Yes. And Bob is the brain trust behind this task force. He has uh, been a motivating factor and has steered this ship uh, from the time we left port. And here we are discussing ultimately nine months later, uh, the recommendations that the task force has included in its report. Uh, today we're talking about recommendation number nine, uh, which is to adopt a clearer pr uh, definition of the practice of law. Tell me about that, Bob. Well, uh, the problem we have here is uh, you talk to any lawyer and bar leader uh, and a lot of people who work with the court and everybody is against and concerned about the unauthorized practice of law and genuinely concerned when it is somebody who's doing something shady. But, uh, but you know, just writ large, they like to say they're against, everybody's against the unauthorized practice of law, except no one can explain what the actual practice of law is. So we're against something that even we as lawyers cannot define in a way that any person could possibly understand it. So that is not a good look for us as a profession um, to be able to say, you know, you can't do something that we can't tell you exactly what it is, but you can't do it. Uh, so it's a, a know it when we see a definition we're trying to work with here and telling other people they can't do it. And it just doesn't, when the majority of the public is not able to access our services right now, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't create a good look. We can do better. So if, if I'm an entrepreneur, and I've developed what I think is a good online platform for fill in the blank legal forms, simple legal forms. And I want to know if I'm running afoul of any law or regulation in hosting this platform, where would I go to find out? Well, you could, um, you have a couple of options. Uh, you could go on uh, Lexis or Westlaw and um, do some research for a hundred years of case law and see if the court has decided with what you're particularly trying to do is the practice of law or not. That's one option. Um, most people are not going to do that who are not lawyers. Uh, we have some excellent lawyers you could consult. Uh, many of them are on the task force uh, who specialize in professional responsibility law and would be happy to talk to you and try to explain that to you. But again, the, the, and, and that may actually make some sense depending on what it is that the person is trying to do. There, there may be good reason to do that, but just really trying to get a basic answer of what is the practice of law and what is not should not require you to do any of that. We should be able to say in a fairly straightforward way that the practice of law involves giving legal advice, representing people in court, and, and really define it in a way that um, uh, we can't cover everything in a definition, but we can give a basic definition that everybody could explain. But the other thing that, and what we've tried to do in our recommendation is we can explain what is not the practice of law. Where is there a safe harbor for that person to be able to do this? Or where can they look to find out more about how to do it properly? So the concept of a safe harbor is uh, not new. Uh, as it relates to the Illinois Supreme Court. Where, have, where has the court adopted a safe harbor definition in the past? Yes, that's a great point. So the court, uh, for people who work inside the court, uh, so that's clerks, uh, other court staff, as well as volunteers like our Justice Corps program that helps people who are coming into the court on their own navigate the system, uh, which is it's a complicated system. And people have a lot of questions and they are not usually questions about legal advice. They're where do I go? What kind of form am I supposed to use here? Where do I put it? You know, where do, you know, and uh, there was a lot of confusion inside the court about people being scared of the unauthorized practice of law and just not giving advice that would be very useful. So the court has developed a safe harbor policy for court personnel that really just gives in much more layperson terms what is and is not giving legal advice so that people can help people when 
with, with things that are much more procedural or just informational kinds of assistance. So we've tried to build off of that and putting this definition together, what the court has already done. So this isn't in, in defining the practice of law and defining a safe harbor uh, to try and define what is not the practice of law. Um, you're not doing something that the court hasn't already done. Is Correct. that right? Correct. We're just broadening it beyond just court personnel. And um, so tell me how this would work. Where, if, if the court adopts a definition of the practice of law, and we now have our uh, hypothetical entrepreneur trying to decide where where would that person go? Well, we've given the you know we've put the proposal in front of the court. Uh, it's it's really like a one page proposal. It's it's fairly straightforward, but um, that they could adopt it as a rule or a policy. But we'd want it to be out in the in the public information space that people would be able to find it. Um, but the real key here for that entrepreneur is going to be the safe harbor piece. And, and that's where some of the other task force work and recommendations come in. Um, other uh, committees of the task force have come up with recommendations and you can watch the pocket chats on those specific recommendations too, for the concept of a community justice navigator who would have it play a very similar function to the people in court that are already covered by the safe harbor policy in the community. So people going to the library or a government office or a community group um, where somebody could be uh, registered as a community justice navigator by uh, meeting certain training and, and certain requirements, um, they would know that they could go there. There'd be a safe harbor that that person can give them reliable information. And that person would know what they can give and what they can't. They would be trained in how to get people to lawyers and reliable legal assistance. Um, and then the other uh, relevant recommendation here is for an approved uh, legal technology provider, uh, which uh, that entrepreneur could register under a rule that is is not overly burdensome to do this, but you know, meeting some basic requirements about making sure it's a reliable product that they have systems in place to ensure that um, we're not breaching privacy and confidentiality in these uh, situations and other things like that. They would be able to do that. They would be able to register there and then be able to. Um, uh, know that they are in a safe harbor situation by registering. So, so the definition itself does depend a little bit on some of our other work, but it would give that safe harbor option and encourage people to do that. And it's just a better system for everybody, for the public. If, if these folks are registered, everybody would know they're registered. Uh, the court would know that, the public would know that, uh, lawyers would know that, and it will help everybody. You know, it just, uh, the way you describe it, it seems like such a basic concept that we as a profession should be able to define what it is we do so that people will know what not to do if uh, they don't want to be, uh, find themselves on the receiving end of an ARDC complaint. Right. Uh, it does seem pretty basic. I mean, the one thing that people do tend to know, at least people trying to do this legitimately, is not to say you're a lawyer when you are not one. That will be in the um, definition as well. But, you know, for us to be able to say what we do to help people is better for us as a profession, too, because it, we're telling people what they can do, but we're also encouraging people to talk to us when they actually need legal advice uh, by telling them what we actually do for people. We're counseling them, we're advising them, we're representing them, being their advocate in court. Uh, all kinds of studies show that lawyers get better results for people in contested situations. So, you know, being able to say that, uh, this is what we do as lawyers, and, and I think a lot of us do that in conversation, and we should be able to say that in a definition too. Well, thanks for that explanation, Bob. Uh, I want to encourage anybody who's viewing this pocket chat, uh, to look at the Chicago Bar Foundation website, chicagobarfoundation.org. Uh, on the website, you can access the entire task force report, as well as pocket chats regarding every recommendation that the task force uh, has made. Thanks again, Bob. We'll Thank talk you. Soon. Thank you. Have a good day.